welcome to our youtube channel in this video we are going to do design of reinforcement concrete building using robot structural analysis with the european code these are the list of european standards we need to perform design of reinforcement concrete building self height and impose load that is dead load and live load to be referred as per european standard en 1991 part 1 section 1 2002 structure exposed to fire en 1991 part 1 section 2 2002 snow loads european standard en 1991 part 1 section 3 2003 wind load en 1991 part 1 section 4 2003 for seismic load en 1998 part 1 2004 load combination in ultimate limit state and serviceability limit state we need to refer en 90 1990 2002 design of concrete structures en 1992 from part 1 to 3 this module of design of reinforcement building using robot structural analysis with the european code is divided into three parts of videos in the first part we are going to see how to create structural axis standard code definitions modeling of columns beams and roof slabs stories definition this stories definition is very important when we are going to design a multi story building next is member grouping and the primary load types considering dead load and live load so these are the six sub topics we are going to look into that part 1 let we go to the robot structure model So this is a landing page, our first page of robot structural analysis. For that, we need to click New. In that New, we need to select the first icon, Building Design, in the top row. So first, we need to create the axis of the building. So for this uh, demonstration purpose, we will consider the building size of three by three in two uh, segment. so for that the grid to be generated we need to click this uh, structural axis uh, definition in the right hand side so first x axis start from 0 next one is at 3 meter another one is 3 plus 3 6 meter so this is to be in a numbering and in y direction we are going to create the same as 0 uh, 3 and 6 let this shall be numbering in alphabet a b c next one is we are going to create z axis so we can untick these stories click 0 next one is at 3 meter height at 6 meter height this will be in value apply now you can see in view the 3d view you can see that axis of x y z is created after creating this uh, axis we need to create we need to define the standards to be followed for our design materials and loads for that we need to select the tools in the menu bar and in that job preferences we need to click in that job preference units and format we can edit here and these are the decimal point let me consider two decimal point for structural dimensions so likewise we need to define here and forces we need to define here whether it is in kilo newton or kg or uh, feet uh, kg f or ton so those dimension we need to select from here at present we will we can consider as kilo newton other uh, units that is in a displacement angle so these are 
by default we can consider whatever it is having unit conversion also we can do it here and for material it is a european standard we can follow so concrete grade is c30 by 37 the many things we no need to change or update because we are going to design only reinforcement concrete building next in database you need to select this euro code for steel and uh, timber okay and standard loads to be followed as per european code if it is not listed here you need to add it from this and the building soils and all not required and for bolts hanger bolts not required at this time and the reinforcement bars in this list we are having only british standards we need to add european also so you need to click here add new database you can scroll down to check where the european standards are there so en 1992 part 1 section 1 to be added here so let i keep this as our default current database so design codes for steel column structures like it be uh, yeah all those standards are in european standard by default so no need to change anything here and the loads load combination as per en 1902002 snow loads and wind loads are section 3 and 4 of 1991 part 1 seismic load as per 1998 part 1 2004 so that's all the code parameters we need to define under job preferences save current parameters as default and okay now we are going to create column for that we need to click third icon in the right hand side so the member number is default to 1 we need to select rc column in that we need to define the size so here i am going to define the size as 400 by 400 adding this to into our section list now you can drop down uh, and select this sections and the height shall be 3 meter so the beginning point i am going to pick this point so that it will create the downward side so now the column is created so likewise we are going to create in all the nayan location so now the nayan location at 0 to 3 meter level is created now next is we need to create the second level that is from 3 meter to 6 meter for that we need to pick the node at 6 meter as we had defined here that column height to be in a downward direction and the height is 3 meter we need to select the top point of the column so again i am creating so for creating the column we need to select this beginning point so now again the column between 6 meter to 3 sorry 3 meter to 6 meter is created now so now all the columns are created you can see here if you select this total column you can see in the left hand side object inspector there are columns listed here so totally 18 out of 18 in that uh, 19 numbers is at uh, lower level which is from 0 to 3 meter remaining 9 is from 3 to 6 meter so all the 9 row and columns are created here next one 
we are going to create beam members to create beam members we need to select the second icon in the right hand side so we already having total 80 number of uh, members so the next uh, members can be 19 so here rc beam to be selected so we will be doing a rectangular beam of size 300 by 400 so adding this so you will have here the 300 400 and we need to select this horizontal beams and the beginning point we need to select from here so now the first level that is at the 3 meter level beams are created next one we are going to create the top level that is the second level at 6 meter we are going to create the beam so you can also tick this drag so that that start point and end point will for quick drawing you can click this uh, drag also so that that start point and end point will be start at same point so that you can able to draw quickly so now we have drawn both the column and beam sections so next we are going to create uh, flow slabs or roof slabs for that the fourth icon in the right hand side you need to click So my floor thickness, floor slab thickness shall be 200 mm. It should be designed as shell. It is a rectangular shape. And the geometry I need to draw. So first point, second point and third point if I am picking means the shell slab is created now again the three point i need to draw so again here so likewise the slab panel is created now so we had created columns beams and the slab elements now we are going to listing these uh, uh, members into that storage so that that uh, we can able to filter out based upon the storage requirement it will helpful for us to find out the exact reinforcement record for the story wise building because we need to fix uh, what are the members are under storage one and uh, what are the members like uh, columns and beams or floor slabs which are comes under storage one two and three at which level what number of columns are coming and beams are coming we need to define so for that we need to click the icon showing the structure stories in the topmost so here building base level we need to fix as zero we need to define this manually i am going to type here as a two number of repetition at the height three meter Adding this, you can able to find out that story 1 is having a top level as a 3 meter and story 2 is having top level as a 6 meter. Both the stories are having 3 meter height. So adding this, you can see now in this screen, if you are going to select the story 1 means only the story 1 members are visible. If we are selecting story 2 means only the story 2 members columns and beams including the floor slabs are visible here
suppose if we want to view all the members in that column beams and floor slabs of the total structure means we need to off this storied filter similar like you can see if you select this storied one means you can see here in the object inspector if you select this story means it will show the what are the columns comes under this storied one which are highlighted in the screen similar like beams in the model window are highlighted under storied one so suppose i am selecting this storied two means the storied two beams are highlighted now columns are highlighted and the floors are highlighted here now we can see that uh, floors which are start with the number 43 so for that i am going to rename the or oh, rename is not required because the beam number ends with 42 now the floor slab is continuing from 43 to 46 so we had generated our model now now we are going to define the support condition here by default the hinged support had come but in practical if this building is laid over the shallow foundation means the hinged support should not be considered only the fixed support we need to consider for that we can select all the nodes here you can see here support base is showing we need to change this in the left hand side you can see that geometry in that support we need to select we need to change the base into fixed now you can see all the nodes support nodes are created as fixed base so next step is we need to group the members so for grouping the members i am selecting the columns at the basement level that is 0 to 3 meter and going to click this uh, bar selections which is in the top just below the menu bar main menu bar i am clicking this the window is opening now i had selected the 1 2 8 and 10 numbers which is highlighted in the window is a dark blue color so i need to define this as a group so click the tab next to the attribute and here we need to click the downward arrow and it will ask the group definition so this could be the plinth or column level 1 accept then that's all next is i am going to add new number of columns which is above 3 meter again this i am going to add as a new group column level 2 so now you can select this bar list you can see the group name which we had defined just column level 1 if you select means all the column which we had defined just before can be selected here and column level 2 means it is selected here so likewise we need to group the members now so similar like we can also make the group being to the beams and floor slabs so it's based upon the requirement which we are going to perform the design now we can go to the loading conditions so for that we need to define the loads what are the loads we are going to consider first one is dead load second one is live load also we are going to add wind load in x direction wind load in y direction and then seismic load in x y directions 
so for that we need we no need to define in this load type so we will see that how to define wind and seismic load first we will apply this uh, dead load and live loads next we are going to add the loads for that loads menu to be clicked under that load table tile horizontal so now we already defined the load type dead load and the live load for dead load sulfate if you click this whole structure it will bring the list of members to be added next again for dead load i am going to we are going to add floor loads for that we need to select the surface on object so this is applicable only for the floors so that that 43 to 46 which is a floor members are selected here in this list it is in downward z direction considering 3 kilo newton per meter square next is live load this is also surface on object 43 to 46 considering this as minus 5 kilo newton per meter square so you can see here the load view suppose this load view is not visible by default you need to click uh, you need to do right click display loads tick this load values and load symbols and apply you can able to see here now so now we have defined dead load and live load next we are going to define wind load wind load generally we used to define as a wind simulation process so let me see that thank you look description for more related videos subscribe to this channel for notification towards more updates if you have questions or feedback please feed in comment box thank you